So for a straight line, we've just defined the gradient uh, of the line to be the change in y divided by the change in x. And that makes sense for uh, a straight line because actually the change in y divided by the change in x is, is constant. So if I bring up a little box here on this straight line, we can see that wherever we fix two points, so I look at the change in y divided by the change in x uh, to give us the gradient, uh, it's staying at a, at a constant of 2 as the change in y and the change in x uh, vary themselves, but the gradient is 2, it's, it's, it's a straight line. Any any point on that line has, has gradient 2. Um, that's not true for all types of curves. So for example, if I look at this curve here, it's much more complicated. I couldn't just say that the gradient of this curve is a particular number because it's not a straight line. So to deal with this, we are drawing a tangent line uh, at a particular point on the curve. So here I'm just taking this point uh, here and I've drawn in this tangent line. The tangent is just a line that sort of just touches the curve at that at that point uh, but you can see it only, only just touches it so it's only touching uh, once you know here. It could touch the curve somewhere else as well but just once in this little area here and that line has sort of same steepness as this curve has uh, at the point where it touches and that's why as we bring that um, tangent around to different points on the curve you can see there are different uh, steepness is here, the steepness is zero, that's quite a special point uh, on the curve. Uh, and as we go around, the, the, the gradient is negative now, we've got a uh, straight line that's going down, as it, as it was as it was up here as well, of course. Uh, gradient's negative, negative, negative. Oh, there's a point down here, can't quite get it, uh, where the gradient's zero again, and now the gradient is positive and, and suddenly gets very steep uh, around here. Um, but I think with something like this is there's not just a number that defines the gradient. The gradient is different at each at each point, and so we need to do something else if we want to work it out. But we can work out the gradient at a particular point uh, either by drawing the tangent, or, or luckily there is also an, an algebraic method that turns out to be um, uh, quite a bit easier to do that. At least for you know functions that we can write down nicely. So the method to do this is called a differentiation, and we're going to take various functions. I'm going to call the uh, functions y, so for example I'm going to have you know, y equals 1, y equals x, y equals x squared, y equals x cubed, x to the 4, x to the 5, etc. And we're going to work out what uh, dy by dx is. And now dy by dx is a formula which tells you the gradient of the curve uh, at each point on the curve. Now, um, for just y equals 1, uh, that's a straight line, uh, just horizontal line where y equals 1, that's got gradient 0. We know that the, we know that y equals x is just a straight line that has gradient 1, uh, so those actually do, they're just straight lines, they've got a constant gradient. For other things, it's, it's not as simple as that, so uh, x squared, dy by dx is 2x, x cubed, it's 3x squared, x to the 4, it's 4x cubed, x to the 5, it's 5x to the 4, and you might start to see uh, a pattern uh, emerging here, and you can probably guess then what uh, x to the x to the 6 would be, and you can see with all of these what's happened is I've taken the value x squared, x, so the index, say 2, 3, 4, 5 here, and that's ended up in front of the function, and the value 2, 3, 4, 5 there has just reduced by 1, so 3 has become 2, 4 has become 3, 5 has become 4, and here 2 has become 1 because uh, you know, x squared would just be uh, reduce the power by 1, we get x to the 1, and x to the 1 is just x. So here, the number comes out in front, and that's 6, uh, and the 6 reduces by 1, so we give x to the 5. We could do x to the 7, and that would be 7x to the 6, uh, and so on. Um, so that's really useful. Uh, you might just be worth noting that you know the, the rule is, works you know for uh, all va values. I mean, w you know, so actually here x to the one, for example, when I differentiate that, I put the one in front and I get one uh, x and one reduces to zero. But x to the zero is just one, so actually that's just one. So actually this is just another instance of that same rule. Similarly, uh, here if we've got x to the zero, well if I pull the zero down in front, I'm just going to get zero times, well you, get, you might say zero times you know, x to the minus one, but that's just going to be zero, because zero times anything is zero. So, uh, although we wouldn't usually use this rule for these ones, because they're easy cases, uh, it's nice to know that they do fit in, there's nothing sort of special about them in, in that sense, it's the same rule. Um, so, uh, so the way this works then, I said you know, dy by dx is a formula that tells you the gradient of the curve at each point on the curve. So actually if I wanted the gradient of uh, x cubed, say, 
uh, at x equals 2, well, looking at this list, dy by dx equals 3x squared, and then at x equals 2, well, OK, I just substitute in 2 to this formula, and that will tell me the, uh, the gradient, uh, dy by dx, that's 3 times 2 squared, or 3 times 4, which is 12. So the gradient of x cubed at x equals 2 uh, is 12. If I wanted the gradient of, uh, you know, x to the 4 at x equals minus 1, I could say, well, dy by dx equals 4x cubed, and so at x equals minus 1, uh, dy by dx is 4 times uh, minus 1 cubed, substituting that in, and that gives us uh, minus 4. And in fact, if I um, bring up y equals uh, x to the 4 in the graphing software, that's this red curve here, um, I've taken the point uh, x at x equals minus 1, that'll give us this point on the curve here, and the grade, there's the tangent at that point, and we can see uh, that the gradient of that straight line is uh, minus 4, uh, as we've uh, as we found by differentiating. So this is a really useful rule, and it's worth us just writing it down uh, in general. So actually, uh, what we've seen here is if we've got y equals x to the n, where n is some number, then dy by dx, the gradient formula, uh, is equal to n times x to the n minus 1. Whatever that value is, it comes out in front and n reduces to uh, n minus 1. And uh, what we can do from this result is actually to build up some uh, rules for differentiating combinations of these functions as well. So, for example, if I wanted to uh, differentiate y equals 5x squared, um, what we do, well, if x squared were differentiated to 2x, uh, and we've just got 5 lots of it, and it turns out actually that dy by dx is just uh, 5 times the derivative of uh, of x squared, i.e. by the derivative I mean dy by dx. So actually, if we just multiply a function by a number, uh, it's we can multiply dy by dx by that number as well. So 5 times uh, x squared dy by dx becomes 5 times uh, 2x, which is uh, 10x. And the reason that works is if I take y equals x squared, here's the graph of y equals x squared, um, and let's say if I change it to 5x squared, uh, what we've got, uh, you can see it gets much, much steeper. It's actually being stretched, although you can't see it exactly here, but it's being stretched by a scale factor of 5 uh, in the y direction. So all of the, all of the gradients have got, uh, of the different various tangents, have got five times, uh, 5 times steeper as a result of that. And of course this works for other values in functions as well, um, and it also works for a negative value. So if I had y equals um, minus 3x squared, uh, then dy by dx would be minus 3 times 2x, or minus 6x. And again, in the graphing software here, if I uh, change the 5 to uh, minus 3, you can see it's not quite as steep now. It's only multiplied by 3 instead of 5, but all the gradients have become negative uh, what they were before. Where it was decreasing here, it's now increasing. Where it was increasing, it's now decreasing. So, um, obviously it works for all these different functions. So let's do one more. y equals 7x to the 5. dy by dx would be 7 times the derivative of x to the 5. So that's 7 times 5x to the 4, which is 35x uh, to the 4. Um, and the other nice result is that actually if you want to um, differentiate something like, let's say I had y equals 7x to the 5 minus 3x squared, well, the derivative then is, well, this was 7x, the derivative of 7x to the 5 was 35x to the 4, and the derivative of 3 x minus 3x squared was minus 6x, so we get minus 6x there, um, and that gives you the gradient function for uh, this uh, addition of these two functions, 7x to the 5 minus 3x squared. We can differentiate each of these parts separately, only if they're separated by addition and subtraction, I should say, um, and, and that works like that. So if I did y equals uh, 4x cubed plus uh, x squared plus 1, well, dy by dx, if I differentiate 4x cubed, that's 4 times 3x squared, which is 
12x squared. Differentiating x squared gives 2x, and differentiating 1 uh, gives uh, 0. So I don't need to write the plus 0. In fact, whatever number uh, we had here, uh, it could have been plus 4, and then I just got 4 times the derivative of 1, which is 0. Um, you know, it, perhaps it's intuitively clear why adding a constant doesn't make any difference. You know, going back to the graph here, if I if I just you know, add on uh, five, say to this uh, graph, it's just going to shift it up the page, but it doesn't change the gradient in any particular x value. Okay, so so if you look at the point minus one here, uh, that was the point on the curve. It's actually the same sort of point on the curve. When I change the constant, it's just further down the page now but the gradient at that point is still the same. So, um, we can differentiate quite a lot of different sorts of functions now. Essentially anything that's just a, a linear combination of additions of subtractions of, of these sorts of uh, things uh, we can do. So actually this is, so actually we can differentiate anything which is what we call a, a polynomial polynomial function. So if I had uh, even something not on the list, you know, y equals 2x to the 11 minus uh, 3x, then I could say, well, dy by dx is equal to, well, I'm going to move the 11 down uh, and get 2 times 11 uh, is 22. Uh, 11 minus 1 is 10. The derivative of x to the 11 would have been 11x to the 10. I've just multiplied it by 2. Uh, and minus 3x, so that's minus, uh, minus 3. And that's that. And if I wanted to say, well, you know, what's the gradient then of this function? Uh, of um, y equals 2x to the 11 minus 3x at x equals 1, I just need to substitute x equals 1 into here. Well, dy by dx is 22 times 1 to the power of 10 minus 3. 1 to the power of 10 is 1, so this is just 22 minus 3, which is 19. Um, and it turns out that this rule actually generalizes as well to values that aren't just positive whole numbers, so it doesn't have to be 3 or 4 in the power, it could be a negative a value could even be a fraction, and we'll think about what that means in, in other videos.